Welcome to the Pitchworks Podcast. I'm Scott McTaggart. Over the last 20 years, I've been a sales rep, a marketer, a manager, an executive, a consultant, and an advisor. This show is designed to give you access to my list of contacts so that you can learn more about how to present your ideas at work and succeed in your career. Startups and salespeople, marketers and managers, from the Epicast Network in Pittsburgh, it's the Pitchworks Podcast. She gets $10,000 in her account immediately. Okay. And then we get from her what's called a letter of direction. So she signs a piece of paper digitally to our platform that says, please send 10% of my income to Vest. So she continues to collect the 90% of her income she always has. But the 10% she chose to put on our platform comes to us. We then, when we get royalty income from these 137 countries around the world, including, you know, Spotify, iTunes, all the digital plays, all the public performances everywhere in the globe that are collected, we get 10% of that through our platform, and then we distribute it to all the buyers. Hey, everybody. It's Scott. It's Wednesday. It's the Pitchworks Podcast, and it's a very special episode where I actually have a guest host, a, a guest co-host. Lindsay Smith is back in the studio, and she's helping us to talk to Steve Stewart. Steve is the founder of Vest, V-E-Z-T dot co, if you're looking for him on the internet. And uh, Steve has taken blockchain technology and applied it to individual songs so that you can buy shares in the royalties on a song. This is cool stuff. And I appreciate blockchain. I'm not going to pretend to be an expert. I appreciate the music industry. I am not going to pretend to be an expert. Luckily, I've got these people helping me out because I think you want to know about this. If you're a music creator, if you're a music appreciation type person. It doesn't matter. This is something that will eventually impact your life. Uh, as we talk to Steve, we find out that, uh, this is growing to become kind of all encompassing for intellectual property for, for all different types of, uh, media. And, and Steve's just got easy to digest answers right at his fingertips. Uh, before we start the interview, I'm going to ask you to subscribe to this fine program. If only just because it seems like what a host like me should do of an audience like you, uh, let's jump in. Let's talk about this. This is a really, really big edition of your Pitchworks podcast. All right. So like for the first time in history, I've got a guest co-host, Lindsay Yay, Smith. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? It's so weird having you sit there and actually run this thing with me. <laughs> It's going to be a good time. All my fascist tendencies just went flying out the window. <laughs> They're like, no, we must share control and give yes. up the means of production. Yes. Actually, that's <laughs> communism. My fault. Anyway, so on the line, Steve Stewart, how are you? I'm well. I'm well. And you can hear us okay out there in California? It's a long way away, but you sound great. Well, we got a really thick cable to bring it to you. So... <laughs> <laughs> Buzzy's been working all night. He's he took a van. He was reeling it out the back of one of those double door vans. Anyway, um, <laughs> Steve, I I can't tell you how much I appreciate you making time for this because what you're working on, and I know you hear this all the time, right? Like everybody wants to talk about what the future of these blockchain technologies and and whatnot. It, where is this all going? Like people don't really know what the future of all these buzzwords means to their lives. And then when I saw what you were working on and how it's going to impact artists, I said, this is actually a practical application. And, and the first thing I want to ask you, because I'm not a hundred percent, but I want to make sure that I'm close is, so you're actually putting out an app where, um, where people can download it pretty soon or if we're right now, is that accurate? It's accurate. And, and it is an app. Um, and we're, submitting it to Apple this week. Um, we hope to have it available for a soft launch in the next probably, you know, it depends on their approval process, but next few days, and then we'll do a, a public launch uh, in September. But yeah, I'm glad you, 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 you know, you, you use the word blockchain in the way that you did, because I think it is one of those buzzwords and keywords that, that are out there and people throw it around everywhere. And, and really very few people I've spoken to understand even what it is. Um, you know, I barely us, understand and I talk about it all the time. Yeah. I mean, to us, it's, it's literally a digital spreadsheet, right? I mean, that's at the very base level, what a blockchain is now. Is it immutable? Is it decentralized? Is it, you know, there's, there's a million things you could add to that, but people think it's a catch all and will solve everybody's problems from here to, you know, right. eternity. It, it, it's not necessarily the case. Um, IBM is actually advertising with it now. <laughs> IBM, who, which used to be boring and safe. <laughs> 
is right. going yep. out there going, if you want to bring blockchain to your environment, and everybody's like, what's that? Right. Because it's not practical to a lot of people yet. It's not practical. And, it, and it's still in its infancy, as you know. There, I don't know the, of any really scaled project that's on a blockchain now that I have use of, right? So it may be behind a couple of banking financial transaction platforms that may be involved in very small experimentals. Right. But from what I've seen, something at scale where it's a consumer product hasn't been done yet um, in a way that makes any difference. And, you know, it's like saying you have Intel inside your computer. My partner, Robert, says this all the time. He's like, you know, does anybody know the chip inside their computer and what it does? Not really. No, they know right? the brand so, name. Yeah, you know that the computer takes when you type and it spits out an email for you and you can read things on it, but you don't understand the technology behind how that works and nor should you as a, as a layperson or a consumer. Does it work? Is it secure? Does it help you be transparent and, and have efficiency of transactions? Great. If it helps with that, we're all for it. And our platform works with it. Um, we want to increase transparency. We want to increase transaction speeds. We want to you know clean up the mess that is music rights on a global basis. Oh, you just you got know, a big amen from Lindsay across yes, the table. Can. Right? I mean, is it going to happen tomorrow? No. Is it going to happen five years from now? I hope so. I mean, we're seeing positive reactions from our model already. Uh, we opened a branch office in South Korea two weeks ago, and one of the wow. members, our, our COO is a member of the COMCA, C-O-M-C-A, which is their version of ASCAP or BMI. Nice. They're the collection society for performing rights over there. Um, they are amending their charter based on our model of fractional ownership. I mean, there's some associations, there's 137 of these around the world that collect for artists' rights, uh, performing public performances around the world, and they limit the amount of your ownership that you could sell, which sounds crazy to me. Like, they, right. you can't sell more than 50% of your songwriter shares. I'm like, well, what if you have three kids and you want to leave your, your income to them? How do you split something into thirds if you can't split it less than half? That's interesting. So they're actually taking a proactive legislative action that amends their charter to adopt their platform to our basic tenants and the way that we look at ownership and rights management going forward. So we're already making a positive change in the world, which is something that makes me feel good. It's literally an archaic system that exists amongst a bunch of countries and some not. I mean, we have friends in Nigeria. There is no collection society in Nigeria. Right. I just came back from China two days ago. There is really no royalty structure for music rights in China. Yeah, speaking so of the seizing the means of production. It's, yeah, it's crazy. It's it's a crazy environment. We're happy here. And even here, though, if, as Lindsay might attest, if you don't register your name properly or the song title properly, right. you're never going to see those money. And they go, those so money is, and they go into what we call a black box. No one knows where they go to. You can't audit it. You can't collect on it. And they're basically just gone. Well, where I, where I kind of want to start, right, is sure. there, there's two sides of this. And, and, you know, I was reading some of the materials on it, so I didn't sound entirely stupid. Um, the the VEST platform, and that's V-E-Z-T dot C-O, um, the VEST yep. platform brings the listener and fan closer to the artist is is one of the things that, that sort of jumped off the page to me, right? Good. It should. Um because as, as Lindsay and I, we actually did a show together, right? Yes. And talked about how the, the business kind of, the air went out of its tires 20 years ago or whatever. Yes, yes it did. And, and now I just, I w I'm wondering if you wouldn't mind explaining it to Lindsay in the lay terms that you would use to explain it to any artist. Sure. But let me, I'm going to address your, your little, in, your little uh, question there first, because you're exactly Right. And what most people don't understand is the record company never gave the artist the names of their customers. The radio station that plays your song never gives the artist the names of the listeners. Spotify, which is the biggest streaming service in the country, they don't give you the names of the people that are streaming your song. Mm -hmm. iTunes, the biggest digital download company in the world, doesn't give the customer names to the artist. That's crazy the when you think about the Amazon comparable it's crazy. There, right because amazon yeah. knows when exactly. you just thought about looking at something right right yes but think about this you're the creator right you create a song you put it out there in the marketplace it's consumed streamed downloaded played dance to whatever mm. and and you go hey can i reach out to my fans and my customers and let them know that i got a tour coming up uh 
Nope. No. Because nobody mm. out there will give you that contact information. That's well, the missing what? piece I didn't have. We're going to change that, right? We want to put the creator together with the consumer, right? We That's will share amazing. the consumer's information, their contact directly with the creator because we think the creator deserves to know who their customer is. I think you actually did a really nice job of pitching Lindsay yes. when you told me to wait before you would pitch Lindsay. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> because she's because, nodding and, and agreeing with everything well, you're saying. She's trying to reach these people and it's really hard because it is a business. It's hard to know what your target demographic yeah. is when you really you're just don't know who, who, who the listener is. Like you can't, yeah. you don't know who to target. I always you assumed know. you guys knew when I bought your albums online that I bought your album. I just assumed that. No, no. That's no. crazy. No idea. You well, don't I bought your album. It's, it's a, it's you a unit. Know. It's a unit. Yeah, you don't know who streams it. You don't know who downloads it. You know how many people and they'll tell you 